couple of weeks ago, we looked at the dismal future that's coming for the retail gasoline sector. It's a slow, painful death that's been dragging out for a while as car owners have demanded greater and greater range per tank and fuel economy impacts have bitten into smaller gas stations' ability to stay profitable. In fact, the number of retail gas stations in the US has fallen by about 50% since 1994. At the same time, the number of EV charging points has risen dramatically. I mean, to be fair, back in the 60s when the Mars 2 was roaming up and down the original EV charging highway, there were about five stops, so we'd hope that number would go up. Some folks point to the fact that we're nearing parity with the number of charging ports versus gas stations, around 130,000 gas stations and around 108,000 charging ports, as a big sign of progress towards EVs taking over. But because the way they're used is so different, and most gas stations have more than one pump, it makes that kind of comparison more or less meaningless. Instead, the US Department of Energy suggests that it's the ratios between the number of DC rapid chargers and EVs and the number of level 2 chargers and EVs that matters. But a recent survey by insurance comparison website Jerry suggests there might be other important factors to take into account. But what are they? And is the survey right? But first, how does it feel when you click on notifications? And you've clicked your mouse on subscriptions? And told us who you are? I thought I was mistaken, and I thought I heard your notification bell. Did you check the settings? Did you check the settings? Transport Evolve's proprietary blend of fresh-as-a-daisy news, reviews, and context is supported by viewers like you, and by me, Mauling Song Lyrics. If you'd like me to stop, or continue, hang out till the end of the video when I'll tell you how you can support the channel. Despite massive advances, EVs do still take a little longer to charge at rapid chargers than a gas car takes to fill up. Now, there's a whole conversation here about how in an EV it's very rare that at a rapid charger you fill it to the brim with electrons. For the most part, you charge up to what you need, plus a smidge more for luck and headwinds, and off you go. In most modern EVs, you go to the bathroom and by the time you've come back, it's more full than you need. But that means that while we often quote 0 or 10 to 80% charging times, when you're on a road trip, you'll often only fill to 50 or 60% at least if you're wanting to get where you want to go quickly. Then of course there's the fact that for most people there's no need to visit rapid chargers in day-to-day -day life. You charge at home, head to work, and then head back home and top up whenever it's needed. Even with my near double normal length for the US commute, I could actually make it through an entire week's work without recharging if I wanted to, but Kia's decision to make timed climate preconditioning a plug-in only affair means that it's convenient for me to plug in on days when I'm working. But the point still stands. Because most charging is done at home, the usage pattern for rapid chargers is incredibly different to that of gas pumps, which, if you have a gas car, are a source of frequent flyer miles. That helps to explain why there's roughly one gas station for every 2,500 gas cars and roughly one charging port per 18 electric vehicles. And that's probably a significant undercount of charging ports. Those stats incidentally break down to around 41 level 2 charging ports and 6 rapid chargers per 1000 EVs. So as things stand, apart from some particularly pack-led states where pessary-sized governments seem unwilling to take part in our EV infrastructure rollout, numerically at least, things look good. Although, as we noted in our recent news roundup, some of those we are smart states can be more challenging to drive an EV through or own an EV in. However, the number of EVs is increasing rapidly, and if we reach anywhere near targets for EV sales by 2030, Jerry suggests that we're looking at needing 500 charging stations built every single day in the US alone. However, it is basing that statistic on the ratio recommended in the National Plug-in Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Analysis from the Department of Energy published back in 2017. Now, I realise that 2017 is approximately 50 years ago. Uh, no, sorry, apparently I'm wrong. That's just the joy of the last few Q-filled years affecting my perception of time. But in EV terms, it's important to understand just how much the landscape has shifted. The average new EV now has a range of 250 miles, but the quote long-range planning option in that study is 
just 250 miles, nowhere near the 400 plus we're seeing in long range EVs now. And the difference between what it calls the BEV100 model, which accounts for older, smaller battery EVs like the Fiat 500e, and the first and second generation Nissan Leafs, and the BEV250 model is a jump from roughly half a DC rapid charger per 100,000 EVs to requiring nearly six and a half chargers per 100,000 vehicles to support those older, shorter range EVs. And that impact is felt elsewhere, with longer range EVs workplace and public level 2 charging needs are massively decreased, to almost zero, with more short range EVs comes a need for more infrastructure to support them. Now I'm definitely in favour of more sub 200 mile range EVs being available, both for resource and cost reasons, but to achieve growth in that sector, this study suggests will require a greater rollout of infrastructure. Of course, where Jerry cites those figures, it also cites the Department of Energy statistics that suggest there are just 4,500 privately installed charging stations in the US, which would seem likely to be wrong. It's probable that there are more EV owners that have private chargers or use the granny lead, which I think would still count in the stats as at home charging, but haven't indicated that to the Department of Energy. Okay, so it's clear that we probably need more infrastructure, but the question is where should that infrastructure go? Well, obviously, as we've discussed before, we need a significant amount of charging infrastructure to roll out into multifamily dwellings, apartment complexes, rental accommodation, high rise developments. They all need to be a high priority for installing level two charging. Workplace charging is also handy for folks who don't have off street parking or street based charging at home. But a recent study by Volta suggests that to encourage EV adoption, visibility is important. Now let's hedge this by saying that this is a study performed by a company that makes its money selling advertising space on the side of its free to use charging stations. And since I have currently got nothing more than a press release to go off, the quality is somewhat up in the air. That is, I grant, a rather Borg hub sized caveat to put in place, but let's look at what Volta highlight. The study suggests that nearly half of Americans are under the impression that they have not seen an EV charging station. And more than a quarter of those interested in EVs don't think they've seen an EV charging station. I guess that in fact many of them have seen a charging station but didn't realise that's what they were. As an EV driver the woeful signposting of some non-Tesla EV charging stations can make them hard to spot even if you know what you're looking for. If you don't know what you're looking at, you could probably miss them completely, and that's even more true for level two charging stations, which people might mistake for other pieces of street furniture. The study also suggests that three quarters of those considering an EV believe convenient access to EV charging is a bigger barrier to adoption than price. If these survey results are duplicated elsewhere, then we have a big hill to overcome, and one in which making sure that existing and new infrastructure is really visible is going to be a significant part of helping along EV adoption. Because while we have seen massive growth of charging networks like Tesla Superchargers and platform agnostic networks like EVgo, FastNed, ChargePoint and Electrify America, clearly many folks have not seen or realised what that shift means for the usability of electric vehicles. The places where EVs don't work well are becoming a smaller and smaller subset of more and more obscure use cases. That said, one thing does definitely need addressing, and that is reliability. A recent study looking just at CCS charging stations in California found that over 25% of chargers weren't able to successfully initiate or sustain a charge. That unfortunately has been reported in many places without that caveat that it's only CCS chargers. But thankfully, we have shifted to a model where many charging stations have multiple chargers available, and it's usually the case that you can just bop across to another charger. But going forward, this kind of level of reliability is going to become an increasing problem as folks buying EVs are less and less folks willing to compromise for the environment and more and more people looking for the better driving experience of driving an EV. A future that could be undermined by a lack of good functional infrastructure. That's it for today. Thank you for watching and we'll be back soon with more. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There's a link down there. 
If you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolve Take 2, and give the bell a gentle ding to make sure you're told when our next video goes live. And of course, check your notification settings. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew go out to the folks on my right for being our 15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons Chris Maxwell, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, David Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leong, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tezza in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Kyle Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Raging Fellows, Rory Litwin, Jim Burness, Chris Ascenter, and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters Anonymous Freak, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Fagerback, Will Graylan, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds, Ellery Hensley, and of course, Ian. Feeling left out? You can join Patreon at the link below, hit the join button below to support us on YouTube, or show us your support through Bitcoin, Kofi, or our cool swag store. Links are all down there. If you're not in a position to do that right now, know that liking, sharing, and commenting on our videos really helps support us too, and helps us with the all-powerful algorithm and its sharp, pointy teeth. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving! <laughs>